Anchor. Every tree is terrible. Encountering a human stranger, I regard the face with all that old unfairness. Looking for what arrangement is like or unlike my mother's, my father's. And I lean towards that franchise or danger before we have spoken, perhaps instead of speech. I turn toward your life or away. What's terrible about a tree is its facelessness, the radial symmetry that gives no clue to its disposition. Because sentimentality is emotion without form. I, striving to be unsentimental, have three choices coming to terms with a tree. Greening up suddenly, as they do in April, I mean, moving to a beginning, or bearing the full weight of my attention as they do in August, holding humidity and flies in complex shadows, or shedding, the past dripping its turns, what it has done to me in a derangement of color going into my solitude. Between the two, the tree is the better sentence, beginning in real lawn or hill or roadside and moving into its completion until imagination run out at the top, or in fact continue without the vanity of appearing. Last spring, drinking Bloody Marys on the porch, looking out at the apple tree, I'd almost forgotten fall and its apples, how I picked them reaching, then from a ladder, then with an apparatus, how each fruit seemed scarred and ancient as the skin of a whale, and then how winter had looked through bare branches, how it looked back at us, rather, and at night, the street light on the bark that would make a prisoner think of his steel bars, that reflection without understanding. I smoke and put my elbow on the branch. Together the tree and I pass some time. I borrow my stillness from its form, my sentence from its example, all the trouble in my head taking a tree-like shape and disappearing. Spring, porch apple tree in its early blossoming. Look up and see where the power lines interweave, up where the real work is being done. Sparks in the high branches. Sparks. I remember mostly absences, first losses, the willow in the side yard, the old oaks, hackberries, elms, maples, the big storm brought down all over the neighborhood and made a holiday climbed over their bodies, bewildered by the bringing close of what had been beyond my touch. And then a friend's cousin took old dynamite from the barn and exploded the national champion elm outside Wamigo, Kansas, saved from disease by its isolation, so far from any other elm. In a loneliness so great, I'm surprised every adolescent in the Midwest didn't find a way to dislodge it the way we were trying to ruin ourselves. It could have been me. I too have tried to unmake what is great and decent. Not this apple, though, or the twin cherries it lives beside, or the plum in the backyard drowsy with its wine finish. After a while, you belong to trees. A few I don't want to mention. For fear, not of upsetting them, I don't believe in magic can't keep up the fancy that there is anything in a tree that thinks in a way I understand thinking, or does what I would recognize as care, despite the dream, that if it came to it, they would shelter me, perhaps let me become one of them. Not that fear, which is a kind of love, but fear of changing what they are in my mind. A California oak halfway up Mount San Jacinto, the blackjack oak across from my bus stop on 45th and 8th, most morning with men sleeping under its disconsolations. And the fig tree, yes, that one most of all, origin tree in my New Orleans yard, the neighborhood called Holly Grove that had no holly, and a general workman's approach to cutting down trees before they fell on your truck. 
the fig I planted and that fed me months of breakfast if I rose before the mockingbird, fig which didn't survive the unnecessary flood and how it looked when we went back, a bleached accusation. Trees let us speak to ourselves. They are horrible. I like trees most when they are abusive and cruel, the malodorous ginkgo that stains the driveway, golden rain tree pods that wither and drive dark seeds into my bare feet in the drought of August, the honey locust thorns that pierce my knee, and when a branch whacks my face. How when a tree that has long served as shade and comfort like a long marriage falls against the house and it continues to push. That most of all glimmer of the human that I can believe and trust. When I, when I am impeded, I begin to pay attention. Trees taught us to be alert. Our descent from them has been like poetry's descent from dance. And I recognize its voice against the window. Thank you very much.